Well, today is Trinity Sunday in the church calendar. It's the Sunday after Pentecost. Pentecost was last week, 50 days after Easter. And um, Trinity Sunday is where you've got, you have a day where you mark out, okay, this is what um, we want to celebrate the Trinity in, in, in his unity and diversity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I want to use each person of the Holy Trinity in my uh, presentation tonight as we look at the fourth and final value of St. Paul's. We're in a series on values, and I'm just going to run through those values. Values are important to us. They are sometimes just beneath the surface. They're not always articulated, but actually as soon as you begin to um, experience someone or a group of people, you begin to understand their values, and you begin to think, okay, that's why they do what they do, and that's why we're speaking about these this month. So here are the four values that we've been operating on. The first one is aim high. Aiming high is about taking those steps of faith towards God, trust in God. We want to be audacious in our faith. We thought about Peter walking on the water at the invitation of Jesus, doing something that he couldn't have done on his own, in his own human strength. He could only do it with God. And God calls us to aim high with our lives, to take those steps of faith for having our eyes fixed on him. That's just in our private, personal lives of, as Christians, but also as a church together. We want to be audacious in our vision, in, in the way we see things, the way we want to do um, our, uh, our work as a church together for God. It's also about being optimistic rather, rather than pessimistic about what God has for us. We don't want to give up. We want to keep going. And we want to do the best that we can. The second um, value is give it away. This is about generosity. This is about um, recognizing that God has been generous with us, so we want to be generous to others. We want to stir up that generosity in ourselves. So that means uh, welcoming people. That means having a spirit of hospitality where we want to give ourselves away. It means um, having a generosity about our faith. We don't want to hold our faith in like it's some kind of private religion, even if other people want us to contain it. No, this is a faith that is to be given away. If Jesus is the Son of God who died for us and gave us, forgave us from our sins, gives us new life and hope, then actually we want to give that away. We want others to know that faith as well. That's why we plant churches. We want to be generous in, in taking leaders and people from this church and planting them in other communities around Tower Hamlets and beyond so that other people can hear the good news. And that's why we want to stir up generosity in this community so that we can give um, to uh, the needs, not of, uh, just of this church, but actually 50% of our outgoings or, or of our income actually is outgoings to other um, things. We um, help to support a, an, another church, All Hallows Bow, which we planted three years ago, um, and other activities which we're doing in the community. We are a church that gives away half of what we receive. And so it's very important about what we want to stir up in us, generosity. I'm going to speak a little bit about that, as I have been just f um, through this month too. The third value is about enjoying it with others. This is about dynamic teams. We want our teams here to be um, just places where things are happening, where they're um, enabling great things to, to take place. And we have a, a, a great time together in these teams, using every single person's gifts. We want everyone serving in these teams. It's also about um, having fun together and enjoying that experience. So it's not boring. It doesn't need to be boring coming to church. It's something that even with motorbikes going on outside, we can have fun inside. And um, we, we want to go for it. But it's also about having a unity in it with others inside the church, heading in the same direction behind a common vision, but also being in it together with other churches. We want a far-reaching unity across different denominations, different church groups, saying we are, um, we are on a mission together. We want to be a blessing. We want to pray for our other churches that, um, that are around us, enjoying it with others. And the fourth value that I want to address tonight is bow the knee. This is about an attitude of humility and, um, and, and being prayerful and um, seeking God. If aiming high is starting with that audacious faith, trust in God, it ends with bowing the knee. We're going to join in with the activity that we're going to be doing for the rest of eternity. Worshipping God with our lives, every part of our lives. Bowing the knee. So that's what I want to look at um, in more detail today. And if you haven't been here before, I 
like to draw. And so I will be doing that today again. Bow the knee. So if I was to draw someone, bowing the knee, there they are, bowing the knee. The first way that we bow the knee here is that we choose humility. We look at the example of Jesus dying on the cross and we choose humility. Paul writes here, verse 3, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. He starts that because if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, then he says, make my joy complete, verse 2, by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Paul encourages us to choose humility. He says, be like Jesus. Why should we do that? Well, I think we long for relationship. We long for deep, fulfilling relationships in our lives. And we will try and do as much as we can to get those relationships. And the way we do that is self-disclosure. We say to someone, we make an approach to someone, we say, I want to get to know you in some way. You might not use those words. We say, I want to get to know you. And so you reveal something of yourself. And you're hoping that they'll grasp that, not throw it back in your face, but, but give, them, give a bit of themselves as well. And you begin a relationship in that way. One of the problems, though, with the way we um, develop relationships is that we sometimes overstate our case. We sometimes... Um, uh, try to get people to like us and we um, overinflate actually who we really are. We show off, we preen our feathers, wanting other people to say, oh, Rick, you're amazing. And you know, that's the way we want our relationships to develop. But the reality is that um, it's not that attractive if you want to get to know the real person. It doesn't really fulfill us in those relationships. What happens is the people who are going to, um, who that's going to attract, people who want something similar, they want status, they want um, position, advancement, and they will take your posture of showing off and step, onto, um, step on that same ladder and they'll show off and you just get this um, self-advancement idea going on. Jesus here is, is, is showing us a different way of actually saying, no, it's not about showing off, putting yourself out there in that kind of way. It's about coming together in humility. This is choosing a posture that's different, and actually, ultimately, it's more satisfying. It recognizes, basically, our humanity. That I'm a sinful person. I'm a broken person. And this is, this is the real me. This is really what's going on in my life. And when we come to one another like that, we have a different engagement. We have a different response to one another. The person who invented the telegraph was someone called Samuel Morse. It's the person we get Morse code from. And um, he uh, was a great inventor. And he was once asked um, if he ever encountered situations where he didn't know what to do. And um, I love his response. He says, more than once. You know, very precise man. Um, and he said, and whenever I could not see my way clearly, I knelt down and prayed to God for light and understanding. He wants to go before God for help. And he received many honors in his life, particularly for his invention of the telegraph. And he always felt they were undeserved. And he said this, I've made a valuable application of electricity not because I was superior to other men, but solely because God, who meant it for mankind, must reveal it to someone, and he was pleased to reveal it to me. Humility. It means no more needing to pretend. That kind of approach, that kind of attitude, is so much more satisfying. Some people might reject it, but those you encounter will encounter you as the real you. 
that's going to lead to a deeper and greater trust. Just as an aside, that's why um, we love humor that self-deprecates. You know, it's against this person um, telling the joke rather than tearing down other people in our jokes. Both can be funny, but actually, when I tear someone down in my humor, it's not going to lead to trust and vulnerability. If I tell a joke against myself, it actually lead, it opens the way to, um, to vulnerability and trust. So choosing humility is the first way that we bow the knee and to be like Jesus. He showed the way to do that. Second thing we see um, in, in bowing the knee is to grow in prayerfulness. We do this before the Father, to grow in prayerfulness. If I was to draw it, I'd put hands like this saying, Jesus, we want to, you know, the Father, we want to pray to you. Why do we do that? Why would we pray? What, what's, what, what's the point of growing in prayerfulness? Why should we do that? We're busy people. Well, the reason, I think, is because we want to have a secure identity. To know who we are, we need to recognize who we are. And we find that out in the presence of God. Paul here encourages us to pray as Jesus encourages us to pray because it connects us to to the reality of who God is and the reality of who we are. And it's the opposite of pride. Pride says, I can do it on my own. If you're anything like me, I, sometimes I'm just working hard at trying to do something or trying to break through in an area. Uh, and I realize after a while, you know, I've been trying to do this in my own strength. And I just am I'm exhausted, I'm beaten up, I'm broken. And then I realize, gosh, I haven't even prayed about this area. Instead, that posture of prayerfulness is saying, God, I, I'm going to bring this to you. I'm going to bring this situation with my boss that I find really difficult to you. I'm going to bring my stress levels to you. I'm going to bring my loneliness to you. I'm going to bring my worries, my financial worries, my worries about the future, my worries about relationships to you. I want to grow in prayerfulness. And the thing is that when we pray before the Father, we recognize our sin. We recognize our farness from God. But of course, we recognize that we have a God who forgives us. And we receive that forgiveness in that place of prayer. We see um, our needs for God and our, our, that we need more of him. And actually, it's in that place of prayerfulness that we receive more of God. We can't receive more of God if we're not facing him. We can bring our daily needs, our desires to God. Lord, I I need help with this meeting today. I need help with this exam. I need help with just getting through the day because I'm I'm really tired. I need help with that really difficult vicar, whatever it is. We can receive that help in a place of growing prayerfulness. And daily prayer is the way through to develop that habit. I heard about these, um, uh, the early days of the East African mission where the missionaries went into East Africa and they saw people converted and the early converts in the bush were encouraged to have a daily devotional life on their own and they would um, go out into the bush and they would, in the thickets they would um, have their own space where they were praying and, and um, uh, wrestling with God and praying and get, bring their own um, personal lives before God on their own. And as these um, early Christians went to these places daily for prayer, there were these paths were worn in the bush. And you could see all these paths going going out from these villages where these Christians were um, going to their place of prayer. And the thing about that was that they could tell when someone was struggling in their prayer life because the path would not be worn anymore. There would be bits of grass or whatever just growing up. And they had this lovely expression that they used to um, admonish one another, encourage one another. This is what they'd say. They'd say, brother, the grass grows on your path. It's a wonderful way of gently saying, my brother, actually, you need to grow in prayerfulness. The thing I love about that is it's gentleness, it's encouragement, and actually that it is disciple-making. It's one of us 
saying to someone else, brother, the grass is growing on your path. What's the equivalent for us today? Taking responsibility for one another as we grow in prayerfulness. One of the things that we're going to be doing, um, my family, um, particularly Louis and I, is we're going to be taking a sabbatical, a study leave. Uh, I need to call it a study leave because sabbatical is taxable and study leave isn't. Um, But a study leave is what we're doing. I'm going to be studying some church planting work um, in the Church of England over the next three months, and we're going to be taking a um, a little bit of a break as well. So that means you won't be seeing Louis and I um, in church over the next three months. Um, We'll be living here for a couple of um, months and then traveling for a month. But part of the, what we're wanting to do with that um, three-month period, you get them every seven years, supposedly, in the Church of England. We've waited 17 for us, so we're very much looking forward to it. Um, but one of the things that is about pressing into God's presence. We're just longing for, not that we don't do that now, but we want to grow deeper in that. And so we'd, lo- we'd value your prayers as a church community as we... Um, grow ourselves in prayerfulness and grow in in studying these different areas that we want to see God's kingdom grow in this nation. But for us, how can we grow in prayerfulness, growing in um, this activity of um, prayer? So I'm just going to put prayerfulness is the other, um, the second way we express bowing the knee. The third way is pursuing the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We see here, in your relationships with one another, have the same attitude of mind Christ Jesus had, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a human being. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. And therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. When God raised Jesus from the dead and Jesus went to heaven, he sent his Holy Spirit and we depend on the Holy Spirit for our lives. We depend on the Holy Spirit for our life in God. He's the one who reveals Jesus to us. And we want to pursue the ministry of the Spirit. So I'm going to just draw that as a big kind of arrow like this. ministry of the Holy Spirit. Because who wouldn't want to change for the better? Who wouldn't want to deal with areas that are obstacles in our lives? Who wouldn't want more beauty and more love, and more life. These are the things that the Holy Spirit brings into our lives. They are God's empowering presence. One of the scary things about God is that God wants to come and change us. Sometimes, if we're going for it with God, we say, yes, we want that. And if we're struggling with God, sometimes actually we say, I'm not sure if I can handle that. I fear God. But nevertheless, God wants the best for you. He wants you to know change for the better. He wants you to encounter him personally. He wants you to experience his love and life and beauty. And so if there's fear, we need to say, Lord, forgive my fear. Um, Give me a thirst and a hunger for you. And where that thirst and hunger is there, we come to God and say, Lord, we need the ministry of your spirit. We need you. We need you to come and change us, to transform us, to enliven us, to bring us um, that encounter with God that leaves us transformed and changed. That's why we want to leave space for ministry and prayer in our Sunday services and in our connect groups. You know, we can do stuff in um, our own strength, and that's when things start going wrong. Or we can do it in God's strength, when we turn to him and ask him for life. And that's when we start seeing healing and transformation and conversion and so on. 
Paul says in Ephesians, a couple of um, pages back, Ephesians 5.18. He says, don't get drunk on wine that leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. He's saying, you know, don't get drunk on wine. That's like, you know, don't go for stimulants as a way to um, get through life. You know, your coffees and your caffeine drinks and your, um, you know, your buzzes to, just to get you through. Receive the Holy Spirit to give you strength, to give you joy, to give you life. And that sense, be filled, isn't just a, a one-off verb. It's a, it's a present continuous. It's be filled and carry on being filled. This is a daily thing. We need to, whenever we come together as a church community, whether it's here in connect groups or in prayer groups, whatever it is, we come and say, Lord, we need you. We, we pray you'd come and fill us with your Spirit. We need your help. And there was this um, sign in a textile um, mill. And the sign said this, if you, um, you know, when the thread becomes tangled, call the foreman. And there was this young lady who was starting at this textile mill and um, she was doing the threading and so on. And and she, um, the thread got tangled and she just thought, you know, I, I think I can fix this. And sure enough, she couldn't, and she got into an even bigger mess. And so eventually, um, she called the foreman and said, I did the best I could. And the foreman said to her, no, you didn't. The best you could have done is to call the foreman for help. The best we can do is ask for God's Holy Spirit to come and help us. We need the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We want to grow in humility. We want to grow in prayerfulness. We want to grow in receiving and seeking, pursuing the ministry of the Holy Spirit. This is what bowing the knee is about. This is what um, our posture, we want to have this posture at St. Paul Shadwell. To be humble in our relationships with one another. Not to lord it over in any way, but to come and serve. We want to be prayerful. We want to grow in this. If if there's any area in all our values that I I think we're weak and we're we're so weak is this area of prayerfulness. We need to grow in this. And we need to seek the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps they're connected that we say, Lord, we cannot do this without you. We need you. We need your power. We need your life. We need your joy. We need all these things from you. And we depend on you for these things. So all these things come in the context of worship. Back to Philippians 2. Paul writes this. God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. All of this comes together when we worship God. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to give ourselves to worshipping for the rest of this service. We're going to worship because that's the best way to express our humility before God. He is God and we are not. The greatest place of prayerfulness is when we worship together. When we begin to worship and align ourselves with God, we begin to hear him and begin to pour out our lives with him. And worship is a fantastic context for the ministry of the Spirit, where as we worship, as we align ourselves with God's will, with his ways, with um, our, our Godward direction, our focus, we begin to hear him and begin to see what he wants for our lives and for the lives of others. So we're going to do that in um, four ways. Uh, num- well, a number of ways. We're going to worship here in, 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 in this space. And there are four different stations around the church that I'd love you to visit each one as we worship at some stage in in the rest of the service. In this area here, this is about aiming high. This is about trusting God. And so there's a slide just at the end, which is um, just going to show you a map of um, what we're doing where. 
So in, in the left-hand front corner, it's about growing in faith, aiming high. And there are post-it notes there, some from the morning service. And what I want you to do is just to express a prayer, to, to have an area of your life where you say, Lord, I want to go for it more in, in my life. I want to take steps of audacious faith. How can I grow in faith in this particular area? Lord, help me. And just articulate that on a post-it note, put it there, where you want to grow in faith. Back there is about give it away. This is about praying for, the, for um, our church's finances. I just want to just very briefly tell you where we're up to. It's very exciting. So um, I said, I've um, been saying over the last few weeks that we need £21,000 per month to um, get by. And at the moment, what's been happening is that we've had um, 14000 per month, and there's a gap. And that's been made in the past by uh, one-off donations, and that's been drying up. So we've asked the church, can you close that gap, please? And so in the last few weeks, that's moved to um, 17,000 per month, which is fantastic. This is, di- this is regular giving um, by direct debits. So we've got a gap here of 4,000 that we'd love to close per month. That gap, because it's over time, has also been closed by one-off gifts. So we've had, so far... £15,000, which is a fantastic amount. And we still need another £10,000 just over the next three months. 4000 this month, uh, 4000 next month, and 2000 next month to get us to the end of August. So that's our aim, um, regular giving, to get that up to £4,000 per month. Just so you can have another view of that, at the moment, one-third of the church gives regularly. We have one third of the church who are regular givers. We want to try and make that two thirds by the end of August. We want to encourage everyone to give regularly. At the moment, we've got 101 standing orders or direct debits, same thing, monthly giving. Over the last couple of weeks, we've increased that to 110. We've got another 90 to go if our target for two thirds of the congregation. We want 200 direct debits altogether. So that's where we're going, to close that gap and to close that gap. So just one of the things for you to pray about, and we're just so grateful for people who have started um, giving, is one person is saying that they'd like to give two pounds per month. That's fantastic. There are other people who give 500 pounds a month. That's a big range. Where are you with that? What's God saying to you about how much you would like to give? to the church on a regular basis. So that's what that corner's about. Give, um, give it away. And we'd love you, if you don't have a, sta- a direct debit or um, giving a one-off gift, please do think about that. But most of all, please would you pray in that area and pray that God will provide for us. In that area over there, back right-hand corner is about um, enjoying it with others. That's about serving. Please would you pray for the teams of this church. Pray that um, uh, we've got these four areas of um, connecting. uh, uh, That's kind of um, welcoming, hospitality, connect groups and so on. We've got um, creative, which is about worship and the sound and projection and so on, media. We've got children, which is about um, Jess's work, the children's work, the children's church on Sundays, the children's clubs next week, um, youth work and so on. And we've got community, which is about night shelter, it's about um, debt advice, it's about um, the uh, football ministry that we do in the community, lots of different ways we do that. And so, um, would you pray for some of those areas, that God will bless the teams, that they'd be dynamic and fun and making a difference. And if you're not in one, you might like to join one as well. And then at this corner here, this is about bowing the knee. And in this corner, we want to encourage you to ask for more of God. Light a candle and just say, Lord, I want to be transformed by you. I need more of you. I need your, the ministry of the Spirit to flow through my life. I want to be dynamic in my Christian faith. And that can only happen when I'm flooded with the, the mercy and the love of God. Okay? So that's what, so um, Jamie and the band, if you'd like to come up, you're going to lead us in worship. Let's spend the next 15, 20 minutes worshiping God. Let's visit each of these stations. You can do it in any order. And pray Um, into the life of the church, into your own lives in each of these areas. And use this space in the middle to give yourselves in worship. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, this is our response. We're praying in the values of the church, not just corporately for St. Paul Shadwell, 
but individually as members of St. Paul's Chapel. If you're a visitor here today, there's some great values to um, maybe apply to your own life as well. So let's stand. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to worship. And then I want to just encourage you to go visit these stations and go and do business with God.